Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon Uh-oh. and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. <clears throat> We're coming at you on July 31st uh, in, in the heart of the uh, you know uh, COVID lockdowns and riots that, that never seem to end in some places. Um, <clears throat> it come, uh, joining me today to discuss some of these topics and more, uh, up in the left-hand corner, I have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Ever, who's a pilot in the state of California. And on our right-hand corner, I have Leon, the word Brathwaite, and he is uh, the last word in liberty, a retired engineer from the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Oh, also, too, we have a scrolling uh, <coughs> email address down there uh, at the bottom. And if you have any questions that you'd like to shoot out or comments during the show, we'll try and address that in an overtime session uh, at the end. And also, too, if you have any uh, things you want to share for a future show about uh, how your job or business may have been impacted by COVID or the riots, uh, you know, we'd love to hear about that, too, and maybe even discuss it on a show. So feel free to send that to there as well. <clears throat> so jumping right into the show today. Um, it's uh, it's getting to be a kind of a crazy election season, as if 2020 couldn't be crazy enough, uh, you know. And it's election year, and so that's probably also piling into all of the crazy stuff that's happening. Well, <clears throat> recently Trump tweeted uh, that uh, he was considering or urging uh, the consideration for postponing the election for security reasons. Um, And, of course, that has huge implications. Uh, Obviously, Trump isn't doing well in the polls at the moment, you know, regardless of whether or not you believe those polls. uh, The point is, at least most people are predicting Biden is going to win comfortably at this point. And so, I mean, the idea then that, uh, you know, to be urging that, uh, you know, we should be delaying the election is, is essentially fanning the flames of a lot of these people who are in the sort of the rioting mentality on the rioter side, I guess, of all this, that, uh, you know, Trump is the the tyrant who who doesn't want to give up control. And so, uh, you know, anyways, uh, regardless, uh, you guys have any thoughts on that? You guys want to explore this issue a little? Well, Trump, Donald Trump does not have a legal leg to stand on in any things in terms of delaying the elections. Now, Congress could probably do it if they wanted to, but Donald Trump by himself cannot. I know there are some people suggesting that he could, but he cannot, okay? Yeah, um, any of the things that the people are talking about in terms of delaying the election have not been tested in courts, okay? And the other thing that the other thing that is very difficult in this matter, during the biggest crisis in this country, which was during the Civil War, we had an election, the 1864 election, which Abraham Lincoln won. So even then we were able to hold to hold the election. And now just because of whatever Trump says, now we could delay this election? Absolutely not. Now I must say, in defense of Trump on this matter, his issue about the mail-in ballot, I think is a real one. But it's not sufficient to delay the elections. Maybe we need to do something a little more about trying to secure, to trying to secure the integrity of the election. That much I would agree with. But delaying it? Absolutely not. But this thing, this thing about mailing is really and truly ripe for fraud. And I know Team Blue love that because they can manipulate things very good, a lot better than Team Red. Not, not to say that we, that Team Red is, is better, is, is good and, and virtuous and, and Team Blue is, is the bad guys. But Team Blue have a, little, have a little edge where that is concerned. But the elections cannot be delayed, not, 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 not by Trump, by himself. Maybe Congress can do it. But there is a real issue with these mailing ballots, with these mailing ballots that we should really look at. Right now, as we speak, there's an ongoing issue about <coughs> mailing ballots going on in New York. Right now, as we speak, and this was from a Democratic primary that occurred, I believe, on June 23rd, and that is a disaster. Now imagine taking that disaster nationwide. We might not know who is the president until January of the next of next year. I'm wondering what color team libertarian is. Is it team <laughs> white? Because we always raise the flag of surrender uh, in these elections that we always lose. Um, 
is that what our our team color is? Team white. I don't know. Maybe I, I thought we were like a bruised color because I mean I know they're trying to say gold, but we seem to get just beaten down by both of the other sides. Oh yeah. Like, yeah they yeah, don't yeah. even let us in the, uh, in the debates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Team Wav. Yeah. Team Wav for our bruises from getting beaten down. That's a good color for libertarians. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree with Leon. Um, except, I mean, I agree totally with Leon what he's saying. Um, uh, you know, the Congress could do it, but I, you know, they're not gonna. Um, and Trump can't. And I just agree. I agree, hundred percent. I. I'm about the polls, about the polling. Trump polled horribly bad against Hillary Clinton, and look what right. happened. Right. So I'm yes. not. <laughs> maybe he just doesn't poll very well, or maybe he's really going to be defeated. I don't know. I mean, it's another situation. I I don't know if I don't know what team Leon and Jason are on, um, but since uh, we all live in California, is that a correct assumption? Yes, yes. Um, so that means that it doesn't matter what we, who we vote for. <laughs> a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what anyone votes for or who anyone votes for. Because there could be 10 voters, ele eligible voters, show up at the uh, election. And... Six of them would vote for the Democrat if they were typical voters. Three would vote for the Republican, and one would vote for a, a whatever third party they wanted. So uh, that's the way it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, me too. And so it just doesn't matter. Uh, in the last, I don't know how many elections, the Democrat, especially these general election for president, the, the Democratic person uh, won the California uh, general election uh, with a two to one margin. Okay. So yes. that's where I get the six and three. Yes. And uh, they get, it, we are a one, uh, the electoral college votes all go to the winner. So it's a winner take all. So that means that, you know, anyone, you just don't have to vote. And it doesn't matter if you vote, you can vote or you can not vote or you can vote for the Democrat or you can vote for the Republican or you can vote for the third party that of your choice. But none of it's going to matter because the Democrat will get all the electrical, uh, all, the electrical <laughs> all the electrical votes in um, in California, all of them. And there's a lot yeah. of them and they'll get them all. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> about well, it is true. It is oh, I was just say, well, when you said electrical, were you trying to imply that they, uh, you know, wouldn't get the mail in back? <laughs> 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 I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry, bad, bad joke. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, kind we'll of kind of, um, we'll start, we'll, we'll, the Democrats are going to get all the electors here in California. There's, there's no doubt about that. And in, in, in a sense, it makes a, a vote somewhat irrelevant, I guess. I, you could probably say that, but I still believe it's a it's a right that we should always exercise, regardless of what are the odds against us. I think we should we should always exercise it, regardless of of, of that fact. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. So you know, you may think from my statement that I don't vote, but I actually do in all these elections. I vote and I vote for the libertarian, and you know, so I get one to three percent, depending on how bad the other two are. Um, and that, that's what it depends on, really. I mean, if, if either party, for example, if Tulsi Gabbard would have won the the nomination, which would never happen because she's against war, but if Tulsi had won the Democratic nomination, um, that would uh, that would actually be an actual race, and so probably the Libertarians, a lot of the Libertarians would go with her. And so the libertarian, right. uh, or the libertarian vote uh, last time was three percent. The time before that, it was one percent. With yeah. a Tulsi in there, it would probably be a half a percent because they'd lose so much to uh, someone that was anti-war, like she purports to be. I don't know if she would actually do what she talks about, but 
anyway, she does a lot of good stuff in Congress. So there's that. Anyway, that's that's about it. Well, she, she she's a she's a, a left leaning libertarian. I mean, with highly yeah. associated with the Democratic Party, and I'm, I'm, yes. I, I would have I would have had a problem with her, quite frankly. But you know, that, that's just me. Well, the, you know, there is yeah. one good reason to. I mean, if, if, if you're at least libertarian to vote in these elections, and that's that uh, your vote still uh, helps to push that number up of the popular vote that went for libertarian, which raises their chance of being in debates and other things like that in the future. Sure. So there, there's sure. there's at least one aspect that makes it worth voting on, on that particular item. And so if, if nothing else, I mean, in California, it's an easy choice. You don't even have to choose between the lesser of two evils since there's no choice. You just, you know, for me, it's just vote, vote, uh, vote libertarian, and at least it'll help to get our vote voice in in the future. You know, is the way I look at yeah. it. Yeah, so. yeah, I do too. That because Good point. Uh, I Good want, point. I want my vote counted on that side, and for whatever good it may do. Uh, at least it's it's a check mark that I get to put, and so uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I have no delusions of winning, but at least it's saying to both parties, "Hey, you know, what if we got seven percent of the vote? Then people would go, whoa, what, what's going on here? All these people are voting sure. for this this candidate with these views. I mean, that's a, that's a lot. We have to pay attention to that. Maybe it will take." some of that Democratic and Republican central planning mania and put it in a little bit of a check by the people that the powers to be, whoever pulls the string in those two major, hugely uh, powerful parties, which are, sure. which are private entities, by the way. The, the, po the political parties are all private. Yes. And so um, it may, it may, uh, um, boil out uh, to to reduce the regulatory and taxing that's going on, regulatory environment and taxation that's going on. So um, that's all I, I'm trying to do. You know, I don't have delusions of grandeur for the Libertarian Party, but I think we can make a, a dent in um, in tyranny. A dent in tyranny is better than tyranny without a dent. Sure, sure. I mean, in the short term, uh, obviously, in the short term, I don't, I don't think, I don't think uh, the, uh, the libertarians is gonna make that dent. But I think in the long term they could, because what we see going on right now is too, too much of the country is shifting left, right? Mm -hmm. Academia is shifting left. The schools, uh, K to twelve, is 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 shifting left. Yeah. The media is solidly left. Too much of the country is shifting left. Sooner or later. We're gonna have a revolution, and I'm not talking about a violent revolution. I'm talking about a revolution at the ballot box. It's gonna happen sooner or later. I don't know when, but it's gonna happen because I don't think Americans are gonna continue stand for this leftward shift, this cancel culture, which we'll talk about later on. These sort of things that are going on, I don't think Americans are gonna stand for it for too long. Well, you know, aside from you know the cancel culture and all that, that there there is. There are some other legitimate concerns too about having the election this year as well. I'm not sure that Trump expressed those. Uh, you know, he mainly focused on the security issue. But you know, I mean, the the GOP convention was just canceled, and they're going to be, I guess, redoing it somewhere else in a very small venue. But it, it also in, means too that, in, in North Carolina, in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. Yeah, so it was supposed to be in Jacksonville, I think, and uh, yes. that got canceled, and it would have been some huge event, you know, with, you know, a filling up stadium and that kind of a thing, whereas now it's going to be a much smaller event with less participation. And <clears throat> it also, too, it, it brings up, you know, one of the issues that plays into Trump's strength, I guess, is that he draws large crowds at, uh, you know, a lot of these campaign rallies. And so now suddenly with the COVID stuff, you know, they did one rally, and you know, they. I guess they had a outbreak in that area afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure if it was. You know, everybody died. Really, right? but yeah. Well, but I mean, you know, yeah. the point is that everybody's, you know, gets, uh, you know, the hyper concern about the COVID, 
And and so now, you know, it, it's essentially all these rallies are being canceled everywhere that would normally be occurring right now in an election. So we do have a huge distortion to what would normally be an election. But as Leon pointed out, we had, you know, a civil war before with an election and, and it right. still hurt. So, you know, well, I... You don't. <laughs> You, yeah. you don't want to have a rally and then have uh, half of your supporters die <laughs> off. <laughs> True. It's like, dang, maybe we shouldn't do that. But the Democrats, you guys should have a big giant rally. Lots of people. Real close. Well, yeah, but then they need a different candidate because I don't think Biden's going to get more than about 50 people. <laughs> I, you know, this was this is yeah. one of the things this is one of the things about the polls that I was going to mention. And, you know, we got we got sidetracked here. You know, even though the polls, you, are, you guys are right that that um, Trump is trailing in the polls. But there's a poll that Trump is not trailing in, which is enthusiasm. <clears throat> his, his supporters are far more enthusiastic than Biden's. So that yeah, will come for something true. on election day. Yeah. So and and you're right. You know we we can't really tell how Trump will poll because the last time in 2016, everybody thought Hillary was going to win, including me. I had a yeah. bet on this. Oh, me too. Oh, oh yes, you sure. had a bet. Yeah. I had a brand. Oh yeah, I was shocked. But uh, yeah, and that's that's good to be trailing in the polls is good for Trump because that what it does is it, you know, like you're saying it fires up his base. Yes. But the uh, the Democrats they go, ah, why should I show up to vote or why should I mail this thing in? Uh, sitting here on the coffee table, I don't know if I want to fill it out or not. Mm. Eh, it doesn't matter. He's Biden's going to win anyway. Win anyway, right? right. So, so uh, don't even bother. Just, you know, and then election day comes around and everybody's bawling their heads off. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I, I mean, you know, not that I like to see people suffering, but the whole idea of being so smug and so confident, yeah. it, it just, yeah. you know, in yeah. all things of life, yeah. sports, your business, you know, uh, no matter what it is, the more... Uh, military going into battles. Uh, yes. You know, if you go in there overconfident, you're going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> Can I say ass? I said ass. I, yes, I, I was just, I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask the host if you're allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't cancel you, but I, I <laughs> maybe, maybe our, our listeners will. No promises. Oh, 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 oh! I see a yes coming across the box. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Who put that yes up there? Oh, yes. Oh, another one. I violated. I violated the principles. Yeah. All right. I was talking about a donkey. Uh, well, you, know, it's funny, you know, when you talk about that enthusiasm scale, uh, you know, it's it's funny. I mean, and I see the Republicans, I, it, it, it seems hard to see how we, there's this ebb and flow of crazy tweets, you know, and occasionally yeah. he says some interesting things in tweets that you know maybe make some sense and then sometimes he says some outlandish things i would yeah. think there'd be the some you know hard to say it's like you're getting all just like, <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you want to pull back <laughs> but but with with biden i mean i i think uh what was it one of the bernie sanders people said this last week that um you know having to vote for him was like eating half a bag of you know yes. uh, <laughs> one of the one of the supporters yes yeah, <laughs> I mean, that was somebody in the Sanders campaign, I think. Uh, so I mean, this oh, was wow. not like yeah. uh, this was not just like some guy on the street. This was <laughs> so you know, I, I think there's a serious enthusiasm gap. On the of other course, side. there is. And um, but there's something else here too about Joe Biden. I mean, not. I mean, no. This is this is um, um, this is totally without politics. Seriously, okay, seriously without politics. I think Joe Biden is seriously losing some of his cognitive abilities. No, yeah. seriously. Mm -hmm. And there is a ton of evidence of that. And just this week, just this week, Joe Biden was in, a, in an interview with, with somebody, I don't remember who, and stuff. And they were talking about the growth of the Hispanic population in the United States. Joe Biden says, oh, in the 2020 census, which is two census from now. Now listen to what he said. It is two census from now. So he think he's in, in the year 2000. I mean, and he didn't correct himself. They didn't say, well, he made a mistake. Oh, excuse me. He didn't correct himself. 
Well, remember, he thought over 100 million people had died from COVID. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> a third of the population of the United States. Yeah. yeah so it makes you wonder when they're talking about trillions when they're spending, you know, maybe. But they, if they, if they, they realize it's, it's with a T and not a B. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but no, but seriously, I know, I know, we're laughing about this, but, but I really think there's something going on with this man that is serious. Not, I'm trying to kick, take the politics out of. I'm not going to vote for him, honestly. Everybody knows that, right? But I think there's something really serious going on with this man that should be checked. Yeah, Sanders hasn't lost his mind. He's just wrong about everything. Oh yeah, but, but, he, yeah. but uh, <laughs> Biden has lost his mind. And is wrong about everything. <laughs> well, actually, I couldn't say it any better, Tim. Honestly, I couldn't say it any better. <laughs> Does this mean I get the last word? You get the last word. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, of uh, you know, enthusiasm and, you know, uh, misblown quotes and tweets and everything else, um, <clears throat> it does it kind of beg the question. I mean, it seems like one of the, you know, at least from the Democrats' perspective, one of the reasons why we're in the trouble we're in is because of a leadership problem from Trump is what they're claiming. And it, it does seem, at least like to me, that there's been a lot of blown opportunities for him to actually lead in this crisis with good discussion from the, from the bully pulpit. And so, you know, just as, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I mean, oftentimes, you know, jumping in with you know, sort of half-baked you know, ideas. They're not always bad. They're just, or maybe they're undeveloped or whatever, but he's just sort of jumping in with tweets and, you know, talking about things in sort of a haphazard way, you know, like when he was talking about putting the UV light into people to cure the, you know, and, and I, I think there was actually some legitimacy to what he was saying, but the way he was saying it just kind of leads everybody off base. So, you know, has he, has he squandered the bully pulpit? And if, if so, yes. what, 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 what would you guys say? You know, I mean, if, if you wanted to speak, if you had a thought, would you guys have, you know, what, what should be said in this, in this oh, time man. of crisis? Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well, I, I would say during, during the first wave of this, I think he did. He really did squander the bully part with, I really think he had a, a, um, he could have made a better show of himself. Okay. But Trump's idea of politicking is, to just throw things out there, get the media all riled up, but keep himself in the news, okay? Because he believes all press is good press, okay? Whether you're talking bad about him or you're talking good about him, he's in the news. When you go to the polls, you're going to remember, oh, that was Trump. So you're going to end up voting for him like he did in 2016. But what he didn't realize, I think, is we had a crisis in front of us, which was this pandemic. And he was still in his... I'm going to get reelected mode and didn't realize this was a time to show some real serious leadership through a, a definite crisis. I do think though, that since this second wave came about, I think he have, he's handling these things a little bit better. I think he's trying to show some of that leadership he should have shown previously. And I see him doing a little more things that I think he should have been done. He should have been done the first time. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I think I'm seeing right now. Yeah, uh, Tom Woods just uh, recently had a podcast where they were bringing that up about the squandered opportunities. And uh, his uh, interviewee, uh, a lady uh, that, that knows a lot about what's been going on in, in uh, all over Europe and the Middle East and all these wars and stuff, was saying, she, yeah, she would have, she could find uh, two or three people off the top of their of her head. Tom, I've heard Tom Woods talk about it before, too, where he can think of two or three people that would write a speech and just have him coach to how to deliver it and have a really good speech written by people that know yes. how to write speeches, not him, sure. and, yes. and try uh, to try to get him to where he can actually talk like he's got half a brain. Then they... Uh, he would be able to uh, seize this opportunity and and try to do a, a little bit of leadership instead of just squandering it like you're talking about. And yeah, I agree. He's, you know, he's starting to get a little bit out there, but I don't know. It's it may not be enough. Too little, too late. Well, you know, to me, it's, if, oh, if, if, let, let me just add something, Jason. If the Democrats had a better candidate, I would have said it would have been too late. 
But with Joe Biden, oh, I don't think yeah. it's too late, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as far as the leadership, I, I'm a little more worried, not necessarily for the election, but just for our, the trajectory of our country right now, you know. That's right. As, True. That's a good point. Now. Yes. But, but you know, I, I, I think one of the, the things that I'm, I'm mainly concerned about is, it, from a libertarian point, this is the only way we can ever make a difference, and that's to really put the principles out there. And I, I really don't hear that from Trump so much, you know. I mean, I, I think... You know, a lot of times he winds up more often than not on the right side for, you know, at least fiscally for libertarians. But um, it's, uh, you know, it, there, there's not a principled reason often behind that. And I think for us to really, I mean, you know, this was the moment for us to really discuss liberty and what it means in this country when it's being squashed by government right and left. Yes, and yes. and it, it's just so disturbing not to hear a, a voice like that, you know, coming from, you know, the Republican Party or, you know, our president, you know, at this time when people's livelihoods are being squashed. But but uh, anyways, as far as that goes, oh, it's uh, time for our knucklehead noise patrols. <laughs> that's where we want to discuss it near the end of the show, uh, some kind of a crazy thing that uh, somebody said in the news with the get us all in a good mood going out of the show. So <clears throat> recently there's been some uh, upticks in crime, especially in a lot of uh you know, blue state cities, uh, big cities where, you know, a lot of this uh, rioting and other such, you know, chaos is going on. But uh, AOC was recently, that's Andrea Ocasio-Cortez, uh, was recently uh, quoted as saying, with respect to the crime, the re rationale for the crime, she was said to, she said, they have to go out and they have to feed their child and they don't have, um, they, they don't have money. So, uh, they're put in the position where they need to shoplift bread or go hungry that night. And so, you know, apparently, according to her, this is all an issue of people being hungry, which is why everybody's out shoplifting bread. I, the last time I saw a picture of somebody, you know, leaving a store with something under their arm, it was a TV or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, must, there must be uh, those uh, people at the federal building in Portland must have a lot of food stashed away behind the inside. Yeah. The must be I mean, a lot of food. They now, and when, and when they're burning down the building, they're actually just cooking the food that they had to shoplift. It's apparently what is happening, according to AOC. You see, that woman have a problem, you know. She doesn't understand anything about how our, how our economy is supposed to run. She doesn't understand anything about how our government is supposed to run. And she thinks that that what is happening out there is peaceful protest. I have nothing against peaceful protest. But don't tell me that nonsense that's going on out there is peaceful. It is not. But she says, somehow... She she think it's peaceful, and and these people these people who rioting and doing all this oh they're just wonderful people just trying to feed their children. When they're burning down a building, they're trying to feed their children. Really seriously? Okay, I must have missed that. So if a hungry person knocked on her door and said, you know, I want your food to feed my family, I suppose she'd just give it right over to of him course. or her. Of course. Yeah. Nice, nice and wonderful and altruistic. Yes. Are you sure they'd be knocking at the door or throwing a brick through the window? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I, I'm not sure which is peaceful at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the guy, the guy in St. Louis, who was defending himself against people knocking, quote unquote, knocking at his door, was charged. You hear? Uh, for defending himself. Uh, well, that, that just about. Word. Oh, I think we're just about at the end of time for our show, um, and uh, if we, I don't think we have any comments, so I think that will pretty much uh, uh, wrap up the show. But uh, thank you for joining us. If you'd like to catch more of our past episodes, uh, we are uh, on the Facebook Libertarian Counterpoint page. You can find uh, past episodes, and um, you can also catch future episodes there as well uh, when we air. And uh, thank you again for joining us, and thanks, you guys, for participating, and we'll see you next time. Yep.